Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework tutorial series. Um, my name is Cesar and I'm a product manager from the Microsoft 365 platform side. Now, we are now in the Hello World part two video. So basically we are continuing development uh, of uh, the R solution, which was scaffolded as in created already in the part one. And we tested that in the Visual Studio. We'll open that in Visual Studio code and tested that in the online workbench. In this tutorial two, we're then adding a connectivity to the SharePoint online APIs and surfacing information from the SharePoint site where we are testing this web part. So let's jump right into it. Good, so let's actually get moving in our development. I'm gonna actually go and start uh, and open up my code or go into the, to the right folder. So uh, I guess we used code folder and in here we created a web port. So I'm gonna open up my Visual Studio code from that folder. So making sure that we are in the right location. I do have the terminal already here open. I personally, again, I prefer using the terminal uh, like inside of the Visual Studio code. It's a matter of a preference. You could be able to actually run the code directly in the terminal window as well. You can get the window or terminal to be visible uh, from uh, the view or terminal or the, and the terminal, new terminal. So you can have multiple ones as well. Now, Let's follow up on the tutorial. So let's do gulp serve. So that's basically then making sure that our code is running behind the scenes all the time and not necessarily required, uh, but then uh, as we're catching all of the updates and recompiling the code, we can just easily come in here and do a refresh and we can see how the code is changing. And it's always good to start by double checking that yes, the code looks fine. We are in a good status. Uh, and everything works, there's no exceptions. It's good, 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 good status to start our next step of development. So let's go to the Visual Studio Code. Let me actually uh, hide this one. Let me put that all the way down in there. And then let's start doing some adjustments of things. So, inside of the web part, let's go to the render section and adjust this setting a bit. So we're gonna simplify this structure a bit. So we're gonna get rid of the, some of the settings. So the request is really on replacing everything what we have here from the line 36. Although, oh, not so far, not so far. Let me do this in a keyboard. Dun, 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 dun. And there we go. Let's get rid of all of that and, uh, and paste in this piece of code. So we're going to a bit simplify the rendering of this web part. And more importantly, we can actually see the properties description, but we have something really interesting here, which says this dot context, page context and web and title. And this is really a, a great thing of the web parts. Of course, you can easily access the context where you are. So I can do this context and I can access information, I can access helper classes, I can access Microsoft Craft API, I can access other things here as well. I can do page context and from page context and I can do and clarify information. Am I in a list or accessing a list item? Is it a, what is a site, what is a web? Site basically means site collection and web means site, which is a bit of a confusing thing in SharePoint, but historical names or the cultural info as well. So I can actually go and, and figure out what is the current UI culture? Is it right to left and all of those? So a lot of details available in the page context. And that's what we're doing there. So on runtime, this will resolve then the title of the site where we are running the web part. So that's actually a really, really cool, cool thing. So let me actually save the changes. Let me put the terminal a bit higher and I will save the changes, control S. We can see that the, the static assets and everything is getting re assessed and the web pack is running. So we're getting a new version of the web part available. And that then means that if I come in here and if I do a refresh, we can actually see a new version of our web part and more importantly, we can see the updated layout and it says loading from dev. The dev being the site where we are actually uh, running this code. So let's do a bit more complicated thing. So let me go to the dev and dev has a title of dev. Well, that's a bit of a boring thing. Let's go and adjust that. Let's wait for the gear to come in the top right corner. Any second now, there we go. And now I can actually go to the site information and I can adjust the site name. 
and say my developer site. And the site can have also, of course, have a description. It can have other things to sell. Let's not worry about that too much. I'm updating the title of the site. There we go. And now if I go again in the online workbench, in the context of that site, and we are dynamically accessing the information of the site, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen here. So loading from my developer site. So the title has been updated because again, we are in the context of that site. So in the same way as we would be a web part placed on the page of that site, or we would be an extension in that site or whatever other setting. So that's actually really, really cool. So we can see the, the updated adjustments uh, based on that. Now, what we actually want to do here is that we want to access the site structure. And then we want to list all of the lists within the site. So we're going to use an API and REST API to access that information in the site. And that's a relatively simple thing to do. But let's actually start doing that. Let me go to the code. Let me put the, this one a bit down. So I want to see what's happening there. So that's that's why I actually have it in there. And let's go to our Hello World Web TS file. Let's introduce two new classes here. I'm going to copy paste from the code. So SP lists and SP lists. So basically what we're looking to do in is getting access on all of the lists within the site and then the title output in the title of all of the lists within the site within the code. Now, then what we want to do is that we want to take advantage of the existing HTTP uh, helpers what we have within the SharePoint framework. So there's a separate helpers for accessing information in Microsoft Graph, which is of course the preferred option and the Microsoft Graph API surface is so huge. But as this is a relatively simple web port, we can always use uh, SharePoint REST API, which simplifies things a bit as well. So we're gonna use now SPHTTP. And HTTP, SPHTTP client takes care of the authentication, authorization, all of that stuff behind of the scenes. So it makes our life super, super easy. So we don't need to worry about adding headers and handlers and all of that as part of our REST calls. All of that is getting hidden and abstracted from our calls. Now let's then go back on the, on the web part code. So let's go inside of the web part class, important thing. Let me go a bit below the render, for example, that's doesn't really matter where we put this, but add a new func uh, function or method available. And then uh, we will add a few more styles. So first of all, I'm double checking that there's no exceptions. Oop, we were successful, no exceptions, everything is running, so that's good. And then the next step is actually add a few additional styles, so which we're gonna use in our outputting of the HTML. So I'm gonna go to SCSS file here, it's a module, hello world part module SCSS file, which is basically the CSS, kind of the CSS definition or the styling of the web part. And in here, we're gonna paste in from the code, a two new styles, uh, it's three new styles, two new styles, list and a list item. These are quite complicated stylings and, and quite, to be honest, quite ugly uh, layout, uh, but that's not the point. You understand how they're being then used in the code. Okay, we saved, we didn't have any exceptions, so we are good to go. And then let's go back in the web part side. The references between this is basically the styling definition. So if I now have a look on hello world in here, and if you go to the web part code, we can see the hello world style in here. So we're able to reference those styles using the styles uh, collection and, and a mapping. And this is gonna help on, on as we're doing runtime code, it's much more easier to actually write the code because there's a intelligence of showing the options. And this is really the benefit of TypeScript as well. So let me save that one. And let's actually include one more thing or a few more things actually in the code. So let's add a one more method. And let's have a look on that method. So this is actually a render method and it's gonna take the SP list array, and then it's gonna say all of the lists in the SP lists array, let's output a individual uh, line, for, what, what are those? Well, individual items, uh, a bullet point uh, with, uh, with the title uh, outputting in the HTML. So this is basically in loop, we're outputting as many of these as we have lists within the site. So, okay, that's good. Uh, and then 
in here we're looking into having a list container trying to find a location in the page called sp list container and then putting that html that output html to that inner html so we're dynamically then adding this html on runtime to the rendering section now let's actually get one more item in here doesn't again really matter where but I'm going to add here the render list async. Um, and then in here, we are calling the get list data. And then we are bypassing the response to the render list. Again, matter of a preference, how many functions and methods and, and you want to use. You could, of course, have all of this code in a single method as well. Um, again, matter of a design. Um, this is a matter of an evolution, actually, in our tutorials. Why do we have three of these? But, but again, you would be able to combine them to be actually one as well, matter of a preference. Now, that render async is then responsible of actually getting the data and rendering the data. Now, we just need to make sure that we are actually rendering uh, or calling that method somewhere. So let's go again to the render method and do a bit more adjustments in here. So let me actually do the whole update of this one and update that based on our tutorial. And the key points here to notice is that we introduced a div with an ID of SP list container. Does that sound familiar? Maybe, maybe not. If we scroll down, let's see where is that ID actually being used. And here we go, SP list container. So basically, this HTML, which we're doing in array, we're outputting that inside of that div in our HTML. So we're setting the location in the HTML where we are adding our that additional piece of HTML, and then we are calling that method, which will be responsible of actually making that happen. That should be is enough. So now, if I go back in the browser, and we didn't have any exceptions. Let's actually double check that one. We should have actually seen them already. No, no exceptions. We are looking really good. If I go in here, if I do a refresh, we can actually see a completely new rendering style of the web part. And we can see that we access the list where we have five different lists or libraries. We access them and we're rendering one by one the output in the, in the web part. That was easy enough. So not a big deal to access the information. And, and again, one thing which we really, really, really didn't pay that too much attention. Uh, what we're doing here is that we're accessing the SharePoint REST API surface. Uh, so you, you're doing calls to the API web lists and filtering by hidden equals false. So we're not going to take any hidden lists because a site can have a hidden list and visible list. Um, so we're getting all of the lists which are visible also in site contents and then we're outputting them in HTML. But that's it for this one. Now we have a web part which has been, is hitting the SharePoint uh, APIs and then outputting information dynamically based on the content where the web part is being used. That's actually really, really cool. Now, actually, before we go, let's double check that everything is working properly. So let me go to the site contents, again, outside of the script. Let's create a list. Let's create a plank list. Let's call this uh, the awesome list because lists are awesome. There we go. We have a new list available. And then that means that in the site contents, we have six items. And now let's just double check in that everything is working as suspected. I'm going to refresh the page. And voila, we have the awesome list also listed in here. Ooh, everything works. Really, really cool. So we are good to move to packaging uh, actually this web part and deploy that without the local host running. So everything is really good. It's uh, awesome looking web part. So let's actually move into the packaging mode.